He doesn't get it, does he? Did Prince Harry really believe that the royal family would forgive and forget the moment he offered to help out in his dad's hour of need? As if hurling hurtful grenades at King Charles and his beleaguered clan for three painful years never really mattered. Harry magnanimously informs them he is available for a sensational return to frontline duties. Prince Harry and the latest front pages. Every single front page this morning is talking about how he wants to return to the royal fold. This was something that we discussed yesterday. And The Sun on Sunday, Harry Blocker. This is an interesting headline. Uh, apparently, AIDS stopped Prince Harry travelling to Sandringham to visit King Charles, his father, because they thought they'd never get rid of him. You know those house guests that you sometimes get that sort of come for dinner or come and stay the night and you think, it's time for you to leave now. Well, that's what they were thinking might be the case with Prince Harry. Prince Harry was stopped from joining the King at Sandringham after flying to the UK because the palace feared they'd never get rid of him. I mean, it's quite bad. Meanwhile, front page of The Express says, you know what? Wills won't allow Harry back in the family and that actually it is Prince William that is blocking any return of Prince Harry coming back into the family. Who can blame him? Every single time Harry has got anywhere near the family, he has, of course, tried to monetize the entire incident. I would be very, very sceptical about allowing either of the Montecito miseries anywhere near any aspect of my life because it would end up in a best-selling book, a best-selling book that they would probably forget that they'd written or forget that they had contributed to. And bearing in mind that uh, Meghan herself has declared that she may well write a book, Again, I would be extremely sceptical. And there was an interesting story in Vanity Fair, actually. I love a bit of Vanity Fair. And apparently, Meghan Markle has reached out to Kate Middleton. Could you think of anything worse if you had just had major surgery than Meghan Markle appearing at your bedside. Honestly, you'd literally, you'd be saying, take me back into hospital. Take, put me back under the surgeon's knife. I don't need a lecture on unconscious bias from the Montecito miseries. Please put me back into hospital. Uh, the Duke of Sussex is understood to have told, uh, to have had several warm exchanges with his father following his cancer diagnosis and has told friends he would step into a royal role while the King Charles is unwell. Um, yeah, I wonder what kind of royal role that would be. Um, but William has enough on his plate and will not allow Harry's return to any royal role. It'll end up in a book. It'll end up in an interview. It'll end up in a documentary series. That's the problem. They're always looking for material. Did you see this week as well that Meghan is going to be redoing her podcast? They've found another production company now. I mean, bearing in mind that staff that work with Meghan and Harry literally last five minutes. I mean, what are we now? We're a few minutes into this programme and they've already lost three members of staff, I'd say, since we started, because they just have a turnover of staff. Like, honestly... The turnover of staff at Google is slower than at their place, you know, archetypes and Archwell and all of those sorts of things. So anyway, Megan's going to be redoing her podcast. I want, do you think she might actually turn up for any of the recordings this time? We're not sure. Because, of course, when it came to the celebrity interviews last time, oh, my word, she was there like the proverbial off a shovel. But when it came to actually any of the, the hard work and interviewing real people, not interested. Not interested in actually meeting anyone who is a real person. So, 
A royal source apparently said there's no way that Prince of Wales will wear it. Harry may well want to step into a royal role. But as far as his brother is concerned, nothing has changed. Prince William has enough on his plate at the moment. His father's being treated for cancer. His wife is recovering from abdominal surgery. He simply doesn't have the bandwidth for this. Reports of Harry seeking a partial return to royal duties emerged when he appeared to offer a very public olive branch to his family in an interview on US TV to promote next year's Invictus Games in Canada. Unbelievably, at the weekend, he let it be known that he was offering his services to, on a temporary basis, return to frontline royal duties to help it's out sick. while his dad's off sick yeah. because they are suffering uh, staff shortage problems, to say the least. I think they're I mean, suffering work shortage problems you think, in Montecito. Yeah, don't you think that this just... This just is a, a real indication of just how much Harry doesn't understand what right. he's done. But you can't stand there in America accusing your dad and all the fa your dad of being mean, the family of being racists, all of that. You can't do all of that and well, then just expect right. to be welcomed back into he's the like fold. He's like a grim little vulture sniffing around carrion, isn't he? You know, he's like, might there be a red carpet or a TV cam or some glad handing or a headline in this for me? Well, I may as well return to the front line valiantly and pick up some bouquets of flowers from little kids clapping me as I walk down the street because my ego hasn't been stroked enough in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Your citizens campaigning for privacy. I mean, it's just <laughs> really just pathetic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the royal family uh, will not have him back. We're understanding uh, increasingly uh, via the sources at Buckingham Palace that it's not only William who says there is no way back for Harry ever because of the way he's behaved. It is also the king. The king understands that the people of Britain won't put up with him. He doesn't deserve to be forgiven for the way he's behaved. No. He's cashed in on his own family, selling them down the river, calling them racist, He's calling his off dad the a, sk a skinflint, slagging off the entire country, saying we're all uh, slave drivers or something. Well, I'm sorry, Harry, you've burnt your bridges and there's no repairing them, no. and the palace have made that clear. But the fact that he seems to think, oh, well, you know, I'll come back and help out. Like, the fact that he seems to think, like, oh, thanks, Harry, do that. Turned, it's just unbelievable. Turned up, turned up for half an hour and said, oh, yeah, I've got to go now, folks, because I've got to go and uh, give some awards at a fake news ceremony somewhere in Las Vegas. But yeah, and you've got me on speed dial for when you need my grand well, we presence don't. and my celebrity well, we don't. sparkle. Yeah. Go away. And by the, by the way, some of the papers are saying, oh, the, well, the reason for the shortness, the brevity, of uh, Harry's meeting with the king a couple of weeks ago at 30 minutes in uh, Clarence House was that uh, uh, palace aides feared that they said that Harry wanted to go to Sandringham with his dad, but palace aides feared that if he did that, they'd never get rid of him. That's the actual <laughs> quote. It's not that. He, yeah, had, like, to, he had to get back to Las to Vegas. He had to get back to Las Vegas to present a tawdry award at a tawdry award ceremony for American footballers. That's why he had to leave. That's why the meeting was short, uh, which is another reason why he should never be forgiven. Did Prince Harry really believe that the royal family would forgive and forget the moment he offered to help out in his dad's hour of need? As if hurling hurtful grenades at King Charles and his beleaguered clan for three painful years never really mattered. Harry magnanimously informs them he is available for a sensational return to frontline duties. Only temporarily, mind, nothing permanent. But while his father is off sick fighting cancer, the deluded Duke of Sussex has let it be known that he is prepared to cut a few ribbons, unveil plaques, plant memorial trees, and do all the other mundane stuff he ran away from. Gee, thanks, Harry. Mighty big of you. If the Ginger Winger is surprised that his oh-so-generous gesture was swiftly and unceremoniously rejected, he must be just about the only person who is. Because thanks to his racism lies in that disgraceful interview with Oprah, his spiteful little ghost-written book Spare, and his nasty Netflix series accusing Brits of slave driving, this gormless guy has burnt his bridges and it's unlikely they will ever be repaired. Clearly, William has concluded that his treacherous brother sold his own family down the river for cash and never wants to speak to him again. The king, we learn, is in more of a conciliatory mood and would love nothing more than peace to break out among his warring relatives. But even Charles has drawn the line at Harry re-entering the palace fold, telling aides that there is no longer any way back 
for his wrecking ball of a younger son. Meanwhile, Queen Camilla remains furious over Harry's horrible contention that she is the villain of the story. And Kate, Princess of Wales, isn't ready to put behind her all the anguish she suffered amid a torrent of damaging allegations emanating from Camp Meghan. So, it's only Harry, and by extension his American wife, who doesn't seem to comprehend the magnitude of his crimes against his British loved ones. Uh, why can't the dozy Duke get it through his thick head that the rift he and Meghan opened up makes the Grand Canyon look like a crack in the pavement? Has hapless Harry really convinced himself that one day everyone will be prepared to put the bitter battleground he created down to experience? Astonishingly, it looks as if he has, which goes to prove what is uncomfortably clear about this pampered and privileged prince. He's wired up differently. As a middle-aged bloke, a 39-year-old father of two, he should have worked out the profound nature of the heartache he has caused among the people who used to be his nearest and dearest. But he hasn't. Maybe he will when he grows up. Uh, well, you're the royal expert, uh, Daisy. What did you think of my thoughts there? Uh... Well, I think you should come off the fence, Kevin, and tell, <laughs> and tell us what you really think. Yeah, kind about, of, uh, I hedge my bets. About, I, about yeah. Harry and Meghan. I mean, I think fundamentally you're right in that the problem is with William. It's not with Charles necessarily. I yeah. think Charles, as most 75-year-olds with cancer, would want to see you know, your kids kiss and make up. You'd want yeah, yeah, to build yeah. those bridges and so on. So I think it's really sad. But I think William is the one that's saying, you know, seriously, you can do one, Harry. Yeah, William uh, is, is furious. And even Charles, we understand, JJ, has let it be known that although he wants a relationship with Harry, and he would love Harry and William to make up, but he knows they're not going to, but he's let it be known that because of everything Harry's done, he can't come back to royal duties. He can't come back to the royal fold that easily. Yeah, well, let's be... Let's remember that it's William who attacked Harry. Oh, you're going to go on about that fight <laughs> yes. again, are you? Yeah. You've got to grow yeah. up. You've got to move on from William, all your punch-ups. William Brothers punched have punch-ups. He nearly ups. broke his jaw. You know, it's a dog bowl. It could have been a very serious accident. But Shame let's, he didn't. Let's never <coughs> how, how much of a bully William is. Um, but as for Charles... I, I don't believe these rumours that Charles is saying uh, how he can ever return to fold. I think if Harry said to Charles tomorrow, pa, papa, I wish to come back and I'll do whatever it takes, I think Charles would say, yeah, OK, my dear boy. Let us just uh, also remember that in 2018, the British government, uh, in an unprecedented move, sent Prince William as the most senior member of the royal family ever to go on an official visit to Israel and to the West Bank of the Jordan River. And when the atrocities happened before Israel carried out its reprisals, as Hamas knew it would, uh, the Prince and the Princess of Wales from Kensington Palace did record their profound distress at what had happened, the attacks, the murders, uh, the hostage taking and, and so on. And they have expressed, obviously, like right think thinking people, uh, their concern about what we're seeing. But I don't think they're taking sides in this. You can make that case. And you're quite right to say, Kevin, it is unprecedented and maybe it is unwise. But such is the enormity of what's going on there. And we must remember that this was started by Hamas, knowing full well that an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth is in, in, in Genesis and knowing full well that Israel would respond, and therefore knowing full well that their people inside Gaza would be the people who would actually be the casualties in this. And Britain, of course, has got a very big role in this, much bigger than people might think, because we exercise the mandate established by the Treaty of Versailles in 1919 until uh, the the mandate over Palestine until the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. And of course, it was the Balfour Declaration which paved the way to a homeland uh, for uh, the Jewish people. Also, the British royal family has many connections with the crowned heads in the, in the Middle East, particularly uh, King Abdullah of Jordan and also the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Emirates. So Netanyahu is not listening to many people. He's certainly not listening to Biden. But actually, I think he will listen 
because it is Prince William. Netanyahu will sit up and listen. The difficulty is whether he can actually convince his uh, the more extreme right wing elements of his coalition. Remember, he hasn't got absolute power. He's got a coalition of lots of little bits and pieces that he's trying to please um, in his dealing with um, not just Gaza, but um, the Palestinians across, across Israel and, and elsewhere. Um, the Americans will put pressure on. He can use that to put pressure on those extreme elements of his government. Whether that will change the price of fish or not, I'm not sure at all. You know, the, the mood music that's coming out of Netanyahu is he's you know, seeing a final, sharp, um, quick operation to uh, get rid of the, the remnants of, of Hamas. He may find some other way of dressing that up and, and meeting what the international community is, is telling him to do, or he may just do as he's always done and just ignore us. The royal family's words carry a lot of power. How will, behind closed doors, the international community be greeting this unprecedented move by Prince William? Well, I, I think it's fascinating. You know, his father got criticised for entering into um, geopolitics um, uh, whenever he started talking about climate change and everything else. And therefore, you know, it is not unusual for the Prince of Wales to be more outspoken than uh, you would expect someone um, in, uh, next in line for the, for the throne. Of course, if uh, whenever he succeeds the throne, he'll, he'll be completely neutral again, like his father is and his grandmother was. Um, uh, and we have to recognise that he's an influencer. You know, no matter what, you know, Elon Musk will come out and make um, comments as will other senior business people, as will Hollywood stars, as will anyone else, because they're influencers. Prince William's got the right to make those comments as a global influencer as much as anyone else. And actually, I don't think his heart's just in the right place. I think his logic's in the right place as well. So, you know, I, I think this is a, a positive thing. I mean, I think he's been quite careful in his language to say, he, you know, he hopes for um, the, the war to stop soon, that he hopes for the fighting to stop soon, rather than saying, I want an immediate ceasefire. I think that would be another level. Uh, he hasn't gone quite that far. He's been quite careful in the language. It amounts to the same thing, let's be honest, right. but it's just the way you put it forward. I don't think it's controversial in the slightest. And I think you'd have to be quite radicalised on one end or the other to find fault with Prince William here. There's a uh, lot the of people on brought... those sides. Uh, yes, there are. Well, they need to understand that the monarchy is about unity. It's about bringing people together. As you've said, His Royal Highness has expressed profound concern from, from both sides here. And this is very much in keeping with his father's decades-long commitment to interfaith dialogue, building bridges, particularly in the Middle East, and tackling religious intolerance. And it's worth noting that as president of the British Red Cross, the king himself had a meeting with five humanitarian charities to learn more about the situation in Gaza at the same time as he was meeting with the chief rabbi and speaking with the president of Israel to give his support and being unequivocal in condemning the barbarous terrorism of, of Hamas. And Middle East peace is something that Prince William takes very seriously. He made a four-day trip to the Middle East, actually becoming the first royal ever to make an official trip to uh, Israel and the West Bank. And there he met with Netanyahu, and he also met with Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the of the uh, Palestinian Authority. So I think you know, this is something that is very much close to his heart yeah. and would definitely have been taken in consultation, of course, with the government. And remember, that's the key well thing to, to remember, isn't it? These sort of statements don't happen without government approval. They would have been very careful. I mean, let's read what the Kensington Palace uh, spokesperson said. The prince and princess were profoundly concerned by events that unfolded in late 2023. So I don't like events. It wasn't uh, uh, personally. Um, and continue to hold all the victims, their family and friends, in their hearts and minds. Their Royal Highnesses continue to share in the hope of a better future for all those affected. Um, that's a bit kumbaya for me. But they did condemn Hamas as a appalling terrorist attack upon Israel in October, warning that both parties would be stalked by grief, fear and anger as Israel exercises its right of self-defence, but express their hopes for a lasting peace in the region. Um, as you say, not much to disagree with there for any right-thinking person. However, I don't think there are that many right-thinking people anymore at the moment. I do worry. A lot of people on both sides will say, this is taking sides, this is taking sides. That is always a risk. But you think... They, they've, they've tiptoed down this route quite carefully. Sure. Also, I have to say that, you know, the Western zeitgeist has shifted somewhat over the last few months. It may have been more controversial two or three months ago, but now when you have Biden 
and the Australian government and the Canadian government and the New Zealand government all warning Israel about an offensive in Rafah and so forth. I think, you know, in that context, this is less controversial than perhaps it may have been. Important to say, he hasn't called for an immediate end to the fighting, say, like the Labour Party is now calling. Yeah. He said, as soon as possible. So that doesn't necessarily say that Israel must stop its plans, just that these things must come to an end, yeah. you know, as soon as they can. And had His Royal Highness said this two months ago, it would have been very contentious. Yeah. But, you know, the, uh, the narrative and the mood in the West and amongst Israel's allies has shifted over the last two months. So you now have America, of all places, and Australia, and New Zealand, yeah. and Canada, all warning Israel not to proceed with its Rafa offensive. So in that context, I don't think His Royal Highness is necessarily that, far, that much out of lockstep with the Western zeitgeist. Oh, I don't think he is. But importantly also, Rishi Sunak today also said that he also hopes that the fighting will end yeah. soon. And of course, we now have it confirmed that, the, as, we, as, you, as you would expect, that this was all done with the knowledge of the Foreign Office and be, therefore yeah. of the government, yeah. as, it, as it has to be. And remember, his team that works for him are very competent. They include former government uh, advisers, but also this new private secretary being brought on, Ian Patrick, was actually involved with peacekeeping. He was private secretary to Lord Paddy Ashdown yeah. when he was the UN but, High but, Representative but in Bosnia and Herzegovina. My interest in this uh, with, with you guys, and, and <laughs> certainly with you, Robert, is not whether it's the right thing to say. I don't think anyone really disagrees with what he had to say. Well, he came out with a statement, didn't he, when the king issued the statement right at the beginning of this, um, when, when um, Hamas committed the atrocities. Yeah. And they came out with a statement shortly after the king's statement. And I, I mean, obviously, this is something he feels passionately about. He's, he's been, but I think he's coming at it from the humanitarian angle, mm. rather like, you know, when, when his mother said, you know, I'm a humanitarian yeah. over the landmines. He's coming at it from that angle, I think. And obviously, um, it's. Much more. I mean, you know, this is, <laughs> this is an area where there's been no resolution. What two thousand years? Yeah, right. So, I mean, to actually come up and have a solution yeah. is, is difficult. I mean, he has been to the West Bank, and uh, you know, the papers jumped on that and saying he was peacemaker. Will, but you know, at the end of the day, it, this is a complex political it is. subject, and you know, he has taken advice from. The Foreign Office. I don't know if he's spoken. We we believe he met his father, the king. I was going to ask you if he spoke uh, to his we dad. We don't know yeah. if this has been necessarily cleared by the king. It doesn't sound like the sort of the sort of intervention the king would necessarily mm. make. No, it seems to me that you know, and I said this uh, today. He's made no kind of missteps so far, Prince William, since he's become the Prince of Wales. Uh, he's done everything right. He's had to face up to the problems of his, with yeah. his wife's health, with his father's health, with his brother. You know, he's done everything completely right. This seems to me the first time he hasn't quite got it right.